God bless you. Praise the Lord. We thank you just for being here with us at Bing Television. My name is Marcus Hammonds. I'm just H-A-P-P-Y. I'm so happy that you're here with us as we're having our devotionals. We thank God that our last devotional, which was still on that same line of God's miraculous work or God works in a mysterious way, was on faith. And now we're doing a, a devotional mysteriously. We're dealing with, with one uh, miraculously. We're dealing with one as our savior and our refuge, or how that the, the scripture teaches us that God always has a place to hide us. There's a song that says, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Well, our hiding place, he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckle. And thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes will I see it and behold it. And 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 and, and I, I I I guess I need to go on ahead and stop. But it says, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, neither shall any, and there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, and for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Now, I know that we are living in a time where th there is a virus, as we call it, COVID. And, and I'm so glad that we're living in a country where we, are, we have had vaccines that have been made available to us so that then we can feel a little bit more comfortable against this vaccine, or I mean, against this virus, COVID-19. And it's amazing to me that I'm around people who at times seem to say, well, I'm all right, you know, and I believe in God, but I don't have to take that vaccine and all. And, and I, I will share this. I've always said it to people. I've done missionary work and gone overseas, and when I had to go, they told me in order to go into their countries, I had to take uh, hepatitis A, B, and they said I really didn't have to take C, but I took C and A. I had to take yellow fever. I had to take malaria, you know, different, different shots you would have to take when you go to different countries because of the diseases that are there. But we find here that it says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall uh, abide under the shadow of the almighty, and he is my refuge and my fortress. In my God will I trust. Then it says he'll hide me. His feathers will hide me. Well, I, I want you to know that we can get up here and I, in our own and say, well, I don't have to take it. Or we can look at what Jeremiah said. And because and, I believe that if you study the Bible, let's be a little bit more inclusive and not just take one scripture and then run with it as if it's the only scripture in the Bible. We find out that Jeremiah said it here in Jeremiah 8 uh, and 26. He said, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Then why then is the health of my daughter, my people, why hadn't it recovered? You know, in other words, he was looking at it and saying, there's got to be some medicine. There's got to be an answer. There's got to be some peace. There's got to be something that's going to make a difference in our life. I'm so glad I know Dr. Jesus. I'm so glad I know the physician, the great physician, the one who's able to make everything all right. And then when I look at people and I see that they walk in this thing, and, and, and I don't want to call it willingly ignorant, but, you know, uh, 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 just because you might have heard somebody say this, that, or the other, but I'm taking a flu shot. I, I've had shingles over my body with my body skin peel, and I took three shingle shots just because the shingles were so unbearable. Yes, I believe in medicine. I believe that also when you take medicine, just like anything else that you ingest in your body, you need to bless it before you take it. You know, pray 
and say, God, let it be for the nourishment of my body. Well, the same way he has, is there any bomb in Gilead? Well, my refuge is in the God of my salvation. And I know that in the Old Testament, that when somebody had done wrong, ignorantly or knowingly, that there was a place of refuge. And in Numbers 35, it talks about the city of refuge, that God always had a place for somebody that had done something either willingly or unwillingly, but they were able to find a refuge place. I don't know about anybody else, but I always look for refuge in God. My faith is in God, that in God will I trust. I know we put it on our dollar bill, say in God we trust, but then somehow or another in our nation, we don't really trust in God. You know, that we hear all the other things and it's called, you know, kind of strange and confusing, almost inflammatory in the sense of the word that you hear some people kicking against science and against medicine. But I'm so glad of the technology and the, and the smarts and the things that God has given us so that then we can see that there are vaccines, there are ways for us to be healed and made whole. There are ways for doctors to be able to cure things that couldn't be cured long ago. I am H-A-P-P-Y. I am excited with all zeal that God has been able to give people replacement hips and then even, even a heart. When the heart is messed up, they can replace the heart. They can do all kinds of things in science and medicine. And my faith is not in the medicine, but my faith is in God that God will provide balm in Gilead, that he will provide refuge there, that God will be there. And then you say, well, Marcus, what about this scripture where it says, none of this evil will befall me or any plague come now my dwelling. Oh, I know that God gave that to the Israelites. I know that then in those Old Testament days that God was there alone and the people didn't have any type of medicine. They believed God. When I was in Africa, I was praying for people that were sick and crippled, and I saw God heal crippled people. I saw people who couldn't walk that they had enough faith in God, not in Marcus, but they had faith in God that if I touched them, that they would be whole. And you know what happened? They sprung up and they walked. The, the, the pains that was in their body got away. You know, they didn't have access to medicine and all, but they did have access to God in prayer and by faith. And you know what happened? The miraculous occurred. Well, with you, and you know, and I want to say this and not do, disrespect to anybody, but God gave us common sense to know we've got to drink water. So if you don't drink water, you know, wait, <laughs> you know, you can die of hydration. If you don't eat food, you're going to die of starvation. Well, I'm not, I, I, I'm definitely not skinny and I'm not worried about that part. I've got enough common sense to know that if God gave me food on my table, then I know that God will bless me. I know that if you give me water to drink, that God will bless me. What I will do will ingest that that's in front of me and bless it. You know, I will eat what God sets before me and I will know that. Now you might judge me and by that you say, uh, well, I'm not too sure. Well, when you judge me, <laughs> you may not know me. You really don't define me when you judge me. You define yourself. In the word of God, there's an answer. There's always a provision that God will put food for the hungry. He said, he that thirsts and hunger out the righteousness shall be filled. Somewhere down the line, there's got to be a little common sense that we've got to have to say, wait a minute. If we do what's right, if we wear our mask, if we stay in, if we do the right things, if we wash our hands, have better hygiene, we will be all right. And that's not, a, that's not an act of not having faith, but that's enough having faith that God still is able to bless us. And I know that during this time, some people say, well, you don't understand. My dreams have been decimated because of my business and because of that. No, the same God that did it, then he'll do it again. Once you go inside and then you realize that God will satisfy your mouth with good things. Once you get to the place that you don't trust in the world, but you put your trust back in God, you will find out that God is able to bring blessings upon you and they will overtake you seven different ways. You will find out that your creativity is even better as you had a time to go in and pray. You'll find out that the things that were once hidden in your life will come back alive and then that great things will happen for you. Don't quit trusting God. If Jesus was able to empty himself on the cross, then you need to empty your heart from all your old formal beliefs and premises and things that made you think all the negative and start embracing it and saying, this is the way life is. Now, I will say this to you. Since COVID, we can't go back to the way that things were. We'll never be the same because we've had a lot of people who've died in the United States, a lot of people who've died globally. But the one thing I say to those that are Christians, those that believe God, those that are followers of God, that we can't go on with in faith. This is not the end. It is the beginning of a new day and a new time and a new way of looking at it, knowing that God is able to help us. And I know that as rapid as things are changing in this world, the one thing that remains the same is our Heavenly Father. God never changes. God never changes. He never sees. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He never gives up. He always has his love for his creation. And you and I are the creation of God. I got to give one or two more great scriptures that always ring heart highly in my mind when it comes to the working of the Lord. 
the scripture gives us this, and it says that, that he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and I'm going back to it, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Bible says that in the book of Acts chapter 5, when Peter was walking, people wanted just to get healed by getting up under Peter's shadow. You know what? If God could heal people through the shadow of Peter, you know what he can do? Just by the word of faith, he can heal you. Just by the word of faith, he can bring comfort to you. Just by the word of faith, God can bring peace and resilience to you. In your life, you don't have to quit. You say, well, you don't know. I failed and I've had bad things happen to me. That's all right. Just because it's been bad, guess what? It's going to change. I just gave you this in Acts chapter 5. It says that, uh, that, that, and by the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they that... Uh, and they were all in one accord in Simon's porch, and the rest does no man join himself to, but the people magnified them. And the believers were more added, and the believers were added more to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women, insomuch that they brought forth sick people into the streets and laid them on beds and couches so that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them, and they get healed. All I'm saying to you is when the word of God is the light, you can walk in the shadow of the Almighty. You can know without a doubt that you're not shipwrecked. You're not void. You're not, you're, you're not stranded. You're not alone. But that by faith, that everything's going to be all right. During this time of the pandemic, we've had to be inside of our houses. But in that time, we need to do some inward searching in our hearts. And we need to know that the thing that's more important is family. The thing that's more important is love. The thing that's more important is the breath that we take. The thing that's more important is not the possessions that we have, but the love that's in our life. And we can then look at it and then say, as David said it, and I love David saying in Psalm 23, he said, my cup runneth over. Aren't you glad your cup is running over? Aren't you glad that his peace is there? Aren't you glad that his love is inspiring? And aren't you glad that you now can rest in the ease of the arm of the Lord. That's what he said. He that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty God, shadow us. Almighty God, cover us. Almighty God, let the word of God come richly in our hearts so that we'll find peace and refuge in a most miraculous way is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Beam Television. We have another devotional coming up just for you. God bless you.